but I'd like to welcome, welcome you all to a very special event. It isn't often that we celebrate the 30th year of anything. <laughs> and this is a really important one. And I have to give a heads up to Carrie Dixon, who mentioned two years ago, you know the 30th is coming. <laughs> Not the winter, but the 30th. <laughs> so um, it's, it was in the back of my head. Uh, and um, I would occasionally remind my PAC colleagues that the 30th is coming and we need to plan an event. And then the agenda got full. And then ultimately um, I became a bit forward and just said, these are the people I think should be on the planning committee. <laughs> and so off we went. Uh, your program, if you look um, at the bottom of it, it provides uh, several names that of, of individuals I want to really make sure you are aware of their importance to the Public Art Commission. Um, again, it provides the names of our three speakers. Um, and it also uh, indicates the, uh, the, the support staff who have been um, excellent in providing us through the city uh, support for how we do need to do our business. And I would first mention Carly Watson, who actually really helped make this happen. And she's the one that uh, gave me um, staff development on the role of pulled cupcake, uh, cupcakes. <laughs> I didn't know that thing that it existed. She assured me that everyone would like them. So, so, um, so she is a woman of many, many talents and um, Hy-Vee Bakery is one of them. Uh, but also um, Jackie Howard and Kathy Giesema were also past support staff for um, the Public Arts Commission. Um, I also want to mention that another name is on your program and it is John Forth. And John Forth, <laughs> is what makes it all happen in terms of installing our art. If the art is damaged, he, he's a genius at removing it. A current example is uh, this, uh, the sculpture Balance, which has been uh, on display in its location by the Ames, uh, Ames Public Library. And uh, unfortunately, the ball that the figure stands on began to crack. And John helped remove the statue, and the artist has picked it up and is going to repair it. So uh, that do does say something really special about how the city views art in it, pu its public art collection, in that there are contracts that are signed by artists for whom we, from whom we buy art from, and they have uh, responsibilities past the date of purchase uh, in case anything happens to the art that um, was not because a, a car ran into it or something. <laughs> but anyway, so um, again, I've had the honor to chair this planning committee. And I'm also at the moment still a member for this um, final year as a member of PAC and was a past chair. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the other planning team members. One is Angie DeWard, who is our current chair, and she was not able to come uh, to this event and sends her uh, sincere regrets. Uh, Sarah Sherman, our immediate past chair. Erica Brest, Brest sorry, the PAC vice chair, and next year she will be the chair. And Claire Cruzel is also a member. The team also includes uh, uh, Bob Kindred, and Bob is, the, is retired now. He's served for um, a long, long time. <laughs> I won't tell you how long, uh, as the assistant city manager. And there was a marvelous celebration in this very place, celebrating uh, Bob's uh, role within city government. Um, and he continues on an ad hoc basis because there's some things only he can do well, and with the rush of everything else that goes on, having someone with uh, Bob's background was great to be able to call and bring in to help out. Um, Heather Johnson, 
Um, Heather's been a longtime force in supporting community art, and she was integral in gathering public support for PACs, uh, for, from PAC as other agencies for creating the um, Ames, art, Ames Art Outdoor Sculpture Exhibition. And uh, she is um, just great. She is the director of the Octagon, and um, just couldn't be more pleased that you're here, Heather. Great member of the planning committee. And Carrie Dixon. Um, and she is also a past chair of PAC. And she was on PAC when I joined. And if I, you know, whenever I was chaired, I thought, well, what should I do? And I think, now, what would Carrie do? <laughs> she no longer lives in Ames. Um, she worked for Iowa State for many years uh, as the Facility Sustainable Design and Accessibility Coordinator. That's a mouthful. Um, and it meant she did a lot of stuff. <laughs> and she, in December, left Ames to go to Iowa City to work for one of the largest energy companies in the world. And I will not be able to pronounce it right, I'm sure. Uh, NG, or NG North America, which is working towards carbon neutral energy solutions for the world. So there's Carrie looking after the world. And again, special mention of Carly Watson. So um, those are some of my introductory um, introductions, so to speak. We also have many PAC, past PAC chairs here. Thank you all for coming. And it really shows that you continue and continue to be committed to public art and its history. Um, as obvious from your program, PAC's been in existence for 30 years and few members of the community really know behind the scenes that PAC has been instrumental and bringing public art to the foreground, so to speak, in Ames, whether through its parks, neighborhoods, downtown, city buildings, internally and externally. And its beginnings evolved out of the vision of former mayor, Larry Curtis. And it has grown each year through our current, for the ongoing mayors and city councils that followed him. So um, it's not often you have a budget that is put on the consent agenda of the city council. And that says a lot for its belief of the money is well spent and we, um, we are very careful with how we do our business and we follow all of those regulations that Bob Kindred in his day and Brian Phillips now tells us we need to follow. I would also like to say that, um, heads up to, again, Heather uh, from the Octagon Center for the Arts for um, we're putting together a proposal for September to be the Arts Month for the City of Ames. And I was astonished to hear that 22 art organizations in this community signed off on that. So it's very clear though we were centering on PAC today. PAC is also part of a fabric of community art and the belief in art and well-being to communities. And so, um, so thank you all who, are, who have also had uh, activities through those other communities. And again, heads up to all of them and to Heather for thinking about making September the Art Month. And it was fortuitous we decided to have this celebration during the month. And I will also say, in addition to the uh, community programs, uh, the city is also enriched by Iowa State's historical and current dedication to public art, dating back to the Depression years with Grant Wood and Christian Peterson. So again, another partner in um, public art um, within this community. I'm now honored to introduce our two speakers, individuals that I'm certain you have heard of, may personally know um, through the broad Ames art communities and beyond. They have close connections to the Public Art Commission because they also served as its first and second chair, respectively. First is Lynette Pullman. She was the first Public Art Commission chair and is the current director of the University Museums at Iowa State. She worked closely with Mayor Curtis, putting into reality his vision of the Public Art Commission and what it could do for this community. Uh, Lynette administers and is chief curator of the Anderson Sculpture Gardens Art on Campus Collection and Program, the Bernier Art Museum, 
the Christian Peterson Art Museum. And if you haven't been there of late, uh, um, try to get there when the parking is not so bad. <laughs> and enjoy it. It's a beautiful facility and and then also the Farmhouse Museum. So Lynette spearheads a major con uh, conservation program to restore and repair public art on ISU's campus and includes major public, wor public works of art including 2,500 objects in the Art on Campus collection. She'll be talking more about um, that so I won't dwell anymore on it. Our second speaker is Kathy Svick. Kathy is a longtime resident of Ames and whenever you hear of someone making a legitimate claim, concern or con complaint or announcing something that is important for all of us to be aware of, it's Kathy Svick. She is a blessing to this community. She worked as the marketing coordinator for the Iowa State Memorial Union for 31 years then decided she could do other things with her life. She is indeed a vital force in the Ames art community. In addition, as I had mentioned before, she chaired PAC as its second chair. And she also has chaired the Ames Community Arts Council. She calls herself a local history buff and for good reason. And she currently serves as a volunteer for the Ames Historical Society. Examples of her passion for history, broadly speaking, is found in a Tribune article, A Short History of the Iowa, sorry, the Ames Pool Referendum. I don't know if you remember that. We used to have a pool called Cars Pool, and some of you are young enough, so to speak, to have, have gone to Cars Pool and um, put, partook, uh, partook of its, its um, pool, so to speak. Um, also, she wrote a had a fascinating speech about the ISU connection with the Manhattan Project, namely through her father's lens. The most treasured project while working for the Union was to update the Gold Hall by tracking down 20 veterans who had died in both World Wars, the Korean War and the Vietnam War, and their names are also now registered in the walls of the Gold Hall. So, so I will first turn Hold him over to Lynette. Thank you, Olivia, and thank you to the PAC Commission for inviting me to participate today. I feel very privileged and honored to be with you. A warm welcome to friends and colleagues, so many of you who have been such a vital part of this arts community for so long. As Olivia said, 30 years ago in a few days, the city began the Public Art Commission. It was based on a dream, a shared vision, historical precedence, but also in the hearts and the minds of this community. It's time flies, and now we're 30 years onto it, and it's time to celebrate some of these very heartfelt decisions that were made 30 years ago to enrich and enhance our community. I think that it's the easiest thing to start something, it's the harder to maintain it over time. And that's why the 30 year mark is well worth celebrating. To all those folks who came after I had the privilege of beginning this with Mayor Curtis, to all of you who helped maintain it, congratulations. For one minute, I want to, you to indulge me, please. I want you to close your eyes. I'm not going until you, Close your eyes. In your mind's eye, when I say the name of this place, I want you to think about what comes in your mind's eye. Rome, Venice, Paris, Washington, D.C., New York City, St. Louis, Des Moines, Iowa State. Now open your eyes. We won't all conjure the same images of those cities and those places, but there are some commonalities. Now imagine Rome without St. Peter's Square, the Vatican, Trevi Fountain, the Colosseum, Venice without St. Mark's or the David statue, Paris without the Eiffel Tower, Washington DC without its many monuments, St. Louis without the arch, Des Moines without the umbrella, Iowa State without the Fountain of the Four Seasons. 
without those, we would not be an enriched world. This was a founding exercise that I and the original committee undertook to help sell, if you will, the idea of public art to the city of Ames and its citizens. Imagine Ames. Now imagine Ames in your mind's eye of all the public art that you have brought to the city and how it has transformed it. Again, congratulations. In the late 1980s, a dialogue began about public art for Ames. Our municipal public art program was Larry Mary Curtis's idea and his notion was to enhance the newly renovated city hall. Mayor Curtis was aware of the state's art and state buildings program that began in 1978. It reinvigorated Iowa State's public art project that began during the Great Depression with Grant Wood and Christian Peterson. It also took a leader then and that was President Raymond Hughes who formed the first campus public, the first campus art committee and then made himself chair of it. It was a top-down approach. It worked for a while, but it only worked as long as the community came to consensus. And the PAC program is one of those likewise. It works for the top-down, but it only maintains itself through, through, through community participation. Mayor Curtis was a champion for the Ames public art cause. As the public art concept was widely discussed, he responded to the inevitable citizen comment about there has to be a better way to spend city money. And Mayor Curtis stated, the city can simultaneously do two things, provide basic services and provide aesthetic enrichment. Yay, Larry. He continued to support the city's new arts enterprise. And in 1992, at the dedication of the first public works of art, he stated, and when he, he was almost appalled at this, he learned that Iowa ranked 51st in the nation in public art funding below Puerto Rico. He was appalled and again determined to change that direction. For over 40 years, I've been engaged in public art programs in Ames, Iowa State, and the nation. I want to share with you a lesson I learned early on. Art, especially public art, is the world's best economic development plan ever undertake it. I want to repeat that. Public art is the world's best economic development plan ever undertaken. Think about the economic and aesthetic statement. Art is essential investment in expressing our shared humanity as well as a high performing economic asset. The lesson, invest now for the future and enrich 100 generations with that initial investment. So we only have 470 years left to go. We're just getting started. Mayor Curtis liked that comparison too. In placing Ames, Iowa, and ISU in context in the public art movement, please consider, Iowa was the 26th state to adopt a percent for art program for state capital projects. Those state funds invested with private partnership funds have created the nation's largest campus public art collection in the United States, right here in Ames, Iowa, at a science technology university. Iowa State was founded under the core principles to create a beautiful landscape and building and architecture to inspire learning. That has been successful. Ames has grown out of that very founding basic concept as well. It's amazing that we have 2,500 works of art located over the 1,900 acre campus and with over 1,700 faculty, staff, and students who have helped select public art on campus, just like the community here in Ames selects and helps select works of art for the PAC program. In 1990, when the Ames Public Art Program was initiated, Ames was the first city in the United States with a population under 50,000 people to create a comprehensive and ongoing municipal public program. Think about that. We were the first in the nation with a population of 50,000 to create an ongoing public art program. In 1991, there were fewer than 100 municipal public art programs in any city, regardless of any size. Ames was a leader in the nation with the establishment of PAC. In 1993, 
I believe that Ames citizens were knowledgeable about and understood the public art program. It was a little rocky start to begin with. As Ames Tribune editorials responded to public art, both pro and con, I knew public art was going to last here because the community participated in those editorials and responded, and they understood the public art jargon. Can't tell you how many meetings we went to and said, what is public art? And then we went through that little lesson about the cities of the world. It worked many times. But when people could understand and talk and discuss, I knew we were enriched with our public programs in, in the city of Ames. Ames has a friendly and open city government affording and welcome citizen input all the time. The city's public art program was forged with enthusiasm from many citizens through formal and informal communications with our city staff and elected officials. The list of engaged citizens in support of the municipal public art program is very long. Too long to individually recognize everyone, but, and I would be very concerned I would omit someone inappropriately. A few stand out. Special thanks to Mayor Larry Curtis, Steve Shanker, who was city manager then, Bob Kindred, assistant city manager, and public art liaison, who I know we wouldn't have survived without. Also, Mary Atherley, the council person at the time, and the Ames City Arts Council members and individuals. The success of the City of the PAC program is measured by the number of public works of art installed, the number of Ames citizens who enthusiastically participate in the commissioning and care of public art, and the numbers of citizens impacted. The circle of public art impact can and should be compared with the Italian Renaissance of 500 years ago. We've come a long way, with centuries to go into the future. Public art creates iconic places when combined with landscape, architecture, and aesthetic object, as well as community spirit, the most important ingredient. The commission has its work cut out for it, but is to be congratulated on all that is accomplished. I want to thank those who planned this celebration and those of you who attended today. It really is an honor to be with you. Thank you. When the movement started in Ames to establish a public art program, man, I was, I was all in. I was on the staff at the Memorial Union and had been managing their art programs and art collection and had served on a number of selection committees for uh, Lynette's Art and State Buildings projects at Iowa State. When asked to serve on the Ames committee, I readily agreed. This beautiful former high school was dedicated as Ames New City Hall in April 1990. By June, Mayor Larry Curtis had made it known that he was interested in purchasing art for the building and was seeking help. Curtis, of course, found in Lynette Pullman a ready ally, and through the Ames Community Arts Council, others around the community joined the effort. The group formulated a proposal for a committee and for a public art program that was presented to city council and with Curtis's support, the proposal was approved. The committee was tasked initially with art selection for city hall, but their vision was much more expansive. They just didn't wanna stop with one building, heck, they wanted a program for the entire city. Think big, you know? By August of 1990, the first members of the Public Art Policy and Acquisition Committee, that was the official name, they were appointed. It was a mixture of arts professionals and interested residents, all true believers in the big idea, and was aided in hundreds of ways by the wisdom and expertise of committee liaison, our faithful Bob Kindred. Curtis asked for a special appropriation to get the program going, but city council was reluctant to allocate dollars outside of the regular budgeting process. This was discouraging. Buy art, but no money. Hmm. But the committee instead had a lot of groundwork to do. The group wanted a professional program with serious intent. 
Throughout the remaining months of 1990 and early into 1991, the committee looked at arts programs all over, uh, I'm sorry, at arts programs in over 20 cities. Using models provided by other public art programs, bylaws were developed with very detailed specifications about the committee's role. These included the group's purpose and powers, outlines of committee membership officers and duties, specifications about meetings, order of business, and public partnerships. An additional foundational document set down what public art is and what public art is not, gave background on public art programs around the world, and set context, purpose, and policies, such as acquisition and deaccession, the rights of artists, education, funding, handling gifts, maintenance of the collection, managing controversy, and the roles and responsibilities of all parties. Not very glamorous work, but very, very important. Once this was complete, a strategic plan laid out the courses of action that would set the whole program in motion. In September of 1990, the longtime Ames business, Borns, was closing shop, and as a parting gift, they gave $2,500 to the fledgling public art program. They thought that would be a great way to say goodbye to the city. In December that same year, Helen Daly Smith, an Ames native and member of Ames High's class of 1940, gave $6,000 to purchase art for City Hall in memory of her brothers. In 1991, the group was officially changed from a committee to a standing city commission, commission ensuring its longevity. City Council approved an $18,000 budget in the spring of 1991 to be available in July. In the fall of 1991, the search for art for City Hall began. Given the structure's former use as Ames High School, the decision was made to seek work by Ames High graduates who were working as professional artists. Finding these artists was greatly aided by the coincidence of a major exhibition that year at the Octagon Center for the Arts for uh, featuring Ames High graduates. Gosh, what great timing. In July of 1992, using the Smith donation, seven works by four artists were installed. Two photographs by Steve Hernstadt, a woodcut print by Janine Coop Writing, three pastel drawings by Stuart Buck, and a sculpture by Joe Munch. Now, speaking of Joe, he was given a $1,500 budget, which would barely buy a piece of nice jewelry, much less a major sculpture. After Joe bought the materials, he essentially donated the beautiful and meaningful work that you see in City Hall's stairwell atrium. So why did it take a year to install the first works? Well, when you commission work and give an artist the vision you have for the finished piece, you have to give them time to develop a proposal, acquire materials, and set to the creative process. We learned early on that public art is a slow, slow process. I can see some of you laughing out there. Oh my God, that is so true. In 1993, Helen Daly Smith gave a second gift to the program. $5,000 went to commission a mural for council chambers by another Ames High grad, Eric Saline. If you ever have a chance to tour council chambers when there's no meeting there, be sure to read the plexiglass panels mounted below the beautiful photographs to understand the full meaning of this work of art. Actually, we hope all the artworks will be given the chance to be understood. With the initial purchases for the interior of City Hall complete, the commission turned to a major sculpture for the front lawn. After seeking Iowa artists and finding none doing the imagery we sought and none with the experience in creating major works, we went with an artist in our immediately neighboring state of Minnesota. The works in Janet Lofquist's portfolio were thoughtful and inspiring. She agreed to take on the commission and was presented with our concept. The first design she submitted was not well received by either the commission or the public. When a picture of it was published in the paper, the feedback was, shall we say, extremely negative. But we did not want to give up on Lofquist, and we asked her to try again. And this time she came back with a winner, the sculptures you see today on the front lawn. 
Though her forms carried exquisite meaning, the use of Corten steel with its rusted patina brought a huge outcry over the, quote, rusted junk in front of City Hall, unquote. The commission worked hard to respond to all comments and did their best to explain the sensitive meaning of the work, which is on many levels. The quote by Iowan Herbert Hoover embedded in the piece is still meaningful today. Words without actions are the assassins of idealism. My tenure on the commission lasted until early in 1997. Through that time, a kinetic sculpture for the new Water Administration building on East 5th Street was installed. Cast bronze dance steps were embedded in a sidewalk at Welch and Chamberlain, showing directions for how to dance the Cyclone Twister. And commissioned stained glass panels were installed in City Hall's atrium. By the way, by 1998, Everyone had had enough of the mouthful of a name, Public Art Policy and Acquisition Commission, and it was officially changed to the more manageable Public Art Commission, PAC. As I departed from the commission, future plans would see art at the airport, art in city parks, and a new program called Art Around the Corner, now renamed the Ames Annual Outdoor Sculpture Exhibit. This new program of short-term outdoor sculpture exhibits initiated in 1997 has proven to be PAC's most popular and enduring undertaking. The commission's budget, which has grown through the years, thankfully, pays for stipends for the artists who loan their work and for the purchase of several pieces annually. After the year-long exhibit in downtown Ames, pieces were then made available to city neighborhoods through an application process, thus sending art far and wide out into the community, absolutely fulfilling that original big vision of the group that started 30 years ago at Larry Curtis's urging. I'll close with a quote that I think came from Thomas Edison. He said, the groundwork doesn't show until one day, one day. So happy 30th pack and many more may you have. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Uh, they were very inspiring and it makes me so proud that I have been part of your legacy and as it has been passed on year after year, the belief in public art by our commissioners. You know, long time, like when Carrie left, we thought, what could we do without Carrie? Probably won't say that about me, but that's okay. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that we are all replaced over time and we bring new enthusiasm, new ideas, and new uh, commitment but we never forget the commitment of those who preceded us. We have an award ceremony now um, because we do want to, since it's the 30th, you know, you're supposed to have presents and such things. My family had always had to have presents no matter what the event was. Um, but we have four recognition gifts and I would like to um, mention their names. And if you would come up to the stage um, I will say, give you br a brief um, rationale for why you're getting this award. And then Mayor Hala will be um, also then gifting the awards. But before that, I know he does have a few remarks before we start the award ceremony. Kathy leaned over and said, you better adjust the mic. So I so enjoy coming to events like this and hearing the history of what's transpired before us. And uh, we truly are indebted to those that went before us. And uh, thank you for recounting that. I just want to make a comment before I share a few of my remarks, and that is uh, economic development. Um, Communities in, communities in America are changing. 
And AIM is going to have to be thinking forward. And honestly, people are looking for art and culture in the communities in order to attract workforce. I just came back from a conference in Coralville uh, end of last week, and all I heard was workforce, workforce, workforce. So thank you to uh, Larry Curtis, his widow is here with us today, for his vision because you laid groundwork 30 years ago to build upon. And it's not something we can just do in a matter of a year or two or three years or five years. It takes a long time. But I can't tell you how much I enjoy driving around the community and seeing another piece unexpectedly somewhere you know, around the community. And I look forward every year to seeing the new pieces that are installed you know, in, in downtown. Thank you all. I see a lot of nodding heads, but uh, we really do uh, enjoy it. And it really brings such enjoyment and uh, smiles to our faces. Maybe somebody got a question, wonder what's going on. Um, but uh, it's just absolutely uh, a blessing to have. I've been asked to just share some facts about Art and Ames and the role that PAC plays. And uh, I will say this, uh, we have three boards and commissions that I usually get an enormous amount of applications for, and this is one of them. Usually there's a lot more people wanting to serve on this commission than uh, we have openings. Um, but it just shows how popular it is and how much people value that. Parks and Recreation and Library are the other two commissions that we get an awful lot of applications for. Currently, Ames hosts about 150 works of art in the public art inventory. Dozens more are exhibited on loan through the PAC program. Works include, but are not limited to sculptures, paintings, drawings, photographs, textiles, and mixed media work. And I will share that council just started this year a SMART art, or small, stands for small art, and it was funded with about $10,000. And the whole idea was, was to give out grants to people to do things that were either performing or poetry. We had some very innovative uh, applications. And so I believe that this council uh, will continue, and I will certainly champion to even grow their program more because I think it does enrich and enhance. And uh, we had actually council is committed enough to uh, public art that we actually had a public art workshop that came out of a town hall budget meeting that we had uh, here uh, about a year ago. And uh, we had a, um, Jennifer Drinkwater from Iowa State uh, made a presentation explaining how far behind we are in uh, our funding at the state level. Uh, so we have a lot of ground to cover, but the point is, is that we're lucky, I think, in Ames that we're committed to it and we'll continue to be committed to it. A lot of the pieces that we have have been interactive, encouraging users to make music. Remember Tom Evans Plaza and the wonderful uh, musical instruments they had there? You can explore the art from different angles, observing the effects of nature on the work. PAC's initiatives have encouraged Ames residents of all ages to get involved with the creation and appreciation of art projects. Examples include the birdhouse decorating competition that we had a couple years ago, Chalk the Block that was just recently finished, small arts grants and photography contests were recognized today. Also a few years ago, um, one of the most innovative I think was, was the rock carns or cairns that are uh, in a different park still where they actually have wayfinding. Um, and then also, I call it the interactive tree branch sculpture tunnel that we had. <laughs> uh, there's probably a more, there's probably a better term for it, but, uh, but there's a really a, a gorgeous photograph in the city manager's office on the, on the wall of that. And uh, it just always uh, remind, amazes me what people can, can come up with. PAC is the lar city's largest commission by membership and PAC success has been due to the dedication of over 140 volunteer commission members since 1990, along with the mayors and city councils that have supported and encouraged it during that time. And you know, we have over 120 volunteers that serve on about 16 to 17 boards and commissions. We're successful because people get engaged. And to all of you who have served on, the, uh, on PAC or other boards and commissions, I wanna thank you. Um, we don't take that lightly. It's a lot of work um, and it's because you care and put invest time and uh, effort into it that we're successful. 
Uh, our library board is a great example. PAC's a board, park recreation's a great example. Um, um, and we have a human relations commission. I'll just, I'm gonna forget some of them, but the point being is, is that a lot take time and effort, but it's because of that that we're really successful. So, so with that, thank you for coming. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I uh, always enjoy learning, and I learned a lot from uh, Lynette and uh, Kathy. So, thank you. Well, before oh, he is taller, <laughs> we've had two other my colleagues here we're all about the same height so we didn't have any we didn't have any trouble <laughs> anyway before um uh, we do go to the uh, go to the boards i would like to ask for a round of applause for our two speakers <laughs> it's not often that when you um ask someone to speak that you they don't even hesitate they just say oh sure and uh, there was no hesitation with Kathy and Lynette. And again, uh, what you shared with us was even more, more impressive than I thought was possible. And thank you for all you have done for PAC. I'll start with uh, the recognition awards and two of the rep re uh, recipients are al already on the stage. And so, um, <laughs> um, but one of them, is uh, someone that uh, is, is very important. His name came up many, many times in this presentation. And it is an award uh, to former Mayor Larry Curtis. We know he's not here, um, but his wife, Pam, has graciously agreed to come and accept the award. So Pam, would you come up? Again, we would not be here after 30 years in celebrating uh, the Public Arts Commission if it wasn't for Larry Curtis. And we are thrilled, Pam, for you to join us. What an honor. Thank you. One of the thoughts we had for a gift for you, Pam, was a uh, bouquet of flowers. They don't last, do they? So um, we decided to give you a gift um, by the Midwestern artist, glass artist, Sean Messenger. Don't know if you know her work. Um, her art studio is in Toledo, Ohio. It's on the way to Buffalo, and we drive there at least once a year. <laughs> and, and I have been a collector of Sean's art, and I've gotten to know her. She has a passion for flowers, and she creates sculptures using merino glass canes. And um, so this is a floral display on both sides. And uh, it, take my word for it, it looks great in front of a window. Okay. <laughs> I have one very similar, I have one very similar to that. Um, but when I contacted Sean last month to see if she would be willing to um, make a vase for this occasion, she said, absolutely, and it's for a public arts council? I said, yes, we have a mayor who created it. She said, I wish Toledo had such a mayor. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you so much, and we will um, hold it for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to ask you to, we'll put it back on the table okay. and then have you uh, have photographs taken later. Oh, okay. So, Good. so don't you. leave us. You can't leave us. Our second award is to Lynette Pullman. Um, again, you know she had a close working relationship with Mayor Curtis, was instrumental in, in putting into reality the Public Art Commission, and it was natural for her professional background in building and promoting broad-based Iowa State University public art program. So it was a natural progression, and the city really benefits from your vision, how you work so seamlessly with Mayor Curtis, and got him to do what you wanted him to do. <laughs> it didn't take any hard work, believe me, because he already knew what he wanted to do. So Lynette, 
Um, you have a gift from us that was uh, created by Rob Wallace, who is here. Um, it's a special award and it's, um, Rob is a well-known wood turner in Ames and beyond. He, he made this specifically just for you, Linda. Thank you. Notice, yes, and notice the, uh, the red and gold. <laughs> the piece came from a maple tree harvested in North Ames in 2018. Uh, wood turners have long horizons for how they do their work and he inoculated it with a special fungi to develop the black line spalting. It cured outdoors in his yard. His wife must be somewhat of a saint. <laughs> Is she here today? No. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> I would like to have met her. <laughs> um, but it, uh, it sat outdoors in his backyard for one and a half years. He, he turned the harvested wood on a wood lathe to its final form. It was then colored with aniline dyes, introducing red and gold, red and a golden yellow, and finished it in lacquer. Um, Rob is a real supporter of the arts, I might say. He's a member of the Octagon Center's um, Board of Trustees and has served as the board president for several years. He has won a wide range of ju different juried exhibition awards, and we are blessed to have him in our community and, you know, he does answer his phone and he does what he says he's going to do. <laughs> so anyway, Lynette, I hope you enjoy. There's a, there's a special um, um, pedestal that it sits on that Rob also created for you. Thank you, Rob. Oh, I might add that he doesn't do wood turning all the time. He's a widely respected biology professor at Iowa State University. Our next award goes to Kathy Speck. Uh, our third award is given for her inspiring passion in building the foundation of the Public Arts Commission as one of its first influential members and a leader into today's role. Today's role. Her award is a blown glass face by a local artist, Art, and I hope I pronounced this right, Chicote. Chicote. Um, I spent a lot of time in his new gallery. He's a talker, and so am I. <laughs> An hour and a half later, you could smell the scent of dinner <laughs> coming through the back door. Anyway, Art uh, attended Iowa State University and graduated as an art and design major with an emphasis in art education. Very similar to Kathy's original background, which was in art education. While at Iowa State, he became part of a glass blowing club, the Gaffers Guild. So this had nothing to do with his degree, but had to do with a passion that grew. And he learned the basics of glass blowing. In short, mostly a self-taught glass blower, he continues to expand his techniques that fuel his passion for this very ancient craft of glass blowing. Art says his current designs have roots in Venetian glass working techniques, and he, his objective is to produce a piece of work that is not only unique, but brings a, a visual, tactile pleasure. So please enjoy. We have one more award for Bob Kindred. His name has come up several, several times. And he can come up. <laughs> Bob is shy, but he has a will of steel. <laughs> Since PAC's beginning until his retirement two years ago, which you have heard the story, he served as the city's liaison to PAC. His quiet demeanor and encyclopedic memory always that was there for each PAC leader and members to rely on. The room is always be would become attentive and respectful when he would quietly and gently steer us the right way. <laughs> His ties, close ties to the city manager's office were instrumental in creating PAC's, PAC's historical and living pathway to today. This too is a, is a um, paperweight and it also is an art creation. I picked them both out at his 
<laughs> at his beautiful shop. And I will encourage you to go out and visit his gallery. It is just ecstatic. It's just beautiful. And he has wonderful windows and the, and the sun just flows through. So it's well worth it. So with that, um, those are the four awards that we have. We also have some awardees for a contest that, um, that the Public Arts Commission, Art Commission um, began, which it was art, uh, photographs of art in the parks. And so we have 12, uh, we had 12, um, 12 submissions and we had a, a, a committee that um, juried the submissions and I would like to uh, read their names, and we do have awards for the six individuals. We had two youth awardees. Juen Lee and Lydia Gephardt. Lee's uh, port, uh, photo, photograph is from an aunt's perspective in Lydia's Summer Sundays. And again, you'll find them over here. Are either of you here today? Well, we'll send them to you. The other four are for Delta Warnings. Uh, uh, Tana Tisdale, Shidong Sun, John Wilson, all good. And Linda Cather Johnson. And please enjoy the photos, photographs. It was really a joy. Um, this was the first time we've done it and uh, the enthusiasm of the judges um, and uh, the quality of the, of the art uh, is, I'm sure gonna lead PAC to continue this with even more publicity. <laughs> thank you. But thank you so much. Yes, you do. And please stay to have your photograph taken. Okay. With this, I, I'm going to close our ceremony with a heartfelt thanks to our two speakers and, of course, to Pam Renee Curtis and Mayor Hala for Without Larry, our story of public art for Ames would have been very different. Um, but, of course, we do have a public arts commission and the founding was an incredib incredible sign of belief in the role of public art. So thank you all for joining us to celebrate our first 30 years.